Wow. Oh my goodness. It is hump day, good people. It is freaking hump day. We about to get over that mother mother hump. Oh my goodness. We have the Dallas Cowboys back in action. Tomorrow night, I'll be here at the Red Brick House where, pardon our dust, because we're working on this mother humper. We're going to make this place great. Just like my Dallas Cowboys. I don't know about you, but I'm excited. I'm excited as can be. And uh, I'm excited as can be because this is now the chance. The, you know you know what really makes me feel good this, the, today, um, looking back at the Dallas Cowboys? The funny thing is, is we have heard so many different things about the Dallas Cowboys that they have been able to make people eat crow. Remember, before the season started, everybody was talking about Dak Prescott. He's a turnover machine. Turnover machine. Look at the interceptions. They literally followed every interception. <laughs> Excuse me. In practice. Not, 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 not the game. Not the game. We sitting here, I'm supposed to be the franchise player, and we're in here talking about practice. Practice. I mean, it, listen, we're talking about We're talking practice. about practice. Not a game. Not a game. Not a game. Not the game. About we were practice. talking about practice interceptions. We were talking about practice interceptions for Dak Prescott. That's how cray-cray it, it was. I, I don't know that the NFL talking heads have talked about anybody else's practicing interception and keeping count on it. But lo and behold, Dak Prescott is one of the least intercepted quarterbacks in, in, in the NFL. When Dak Prescott said, I can guarantee you I won't throw 10 interceptions, they laughed at him. <laughs> yeah, scratch that off the list. People say he was a bus driver. That he's not a franchise quarterback that can elevate the team. Well, you can say that the Cowboys throw the football to set up the run. You could possibly say that the Cowboys used to use the run game to set up the pass. And that's what Mike McCarthy tried to do to start the season. And it's kind of amazing as we sit here that through the first few games, the Dak was six TDs and four interceptions. And now he is 23 TDs and six interceptions. Clearly, Dak has put the team on his back, the offense on his back. So scratch that whole thing of not being a franchise quarterback. Of course, there are some people said he's, you know, he, he's not really a top 10 quarterback. Well, he's an MVP candidate now, so we can scratch that off the list. They said, we're going to miss Kellen Moore. I know you'll miss him. I know you'll miss him. I know you'll miss Kellen Moore. Uh, yeah, scratch that one off the list, too. That Mike McCarthy... Can't call plays. That he's ass, ass. Well, between him and Brian Schottenheimer, that's now using pre-snap motion and using all kinds of, not just one player, they're using the whole field and everybody. Scratch that one off the list. So every time they've come up with one of these things, one of these cowboy-isms, the Cowboys knock it out of the park. So the big one now, of course, you remember, you know, it used to be the dink and dunk Dak Prescott or, you know, the garbage time. Court. You know, we've scratched all those off. Now it's time to scratch off the can't beat good teams. It's time to start that right now, and that starts tomorrow. Seattle right now is in a playoffs position. Now, what will happen, you know what will happen if we beat them tomorrow. Well, Seattle's really not that good a team. You know, San Francisco softened them up the week before, you know, blah, 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 blah. But they, you know, have a winning record right now. Same way the Jets had a winning record uh, coming off beating Buffalo. 
Although I guess you could look at that and say maybe Buffalo is not as good as we think. But be that as it may, I believe in my Cowboys. Now, getting to some of the business here because I'm trying to run a business here. Shaq Leonard has arrived a few minutes ago at the airport in Philadelphia. He came into the Cowboys, got wined and dined, and left, of course, without a contract. Eagle fans are saying, yeah, we bitch slapped the Cowboys. Yeah, Philly 500. The Cowboys suck. They messed up a golden opportunity. Well, maybe they did. There could be a multitude of reasons why there was no contract here, okay? One, maybe the Cowboys looked and said, you know, they said it was a great meeting. Great meeting. Um, but they also said that Odell Beckham Jr. was a great meeting too. But the reality was is he was not anywhere close to being ready to play football. So there's a possibility that the Cowboys look and say he's not really there. That's one possibility. Two, Jerry Jones is cheap and says, you know, you want too much money for this. And he's bargaining for a better deal. Three, Shaq likes, likes the Cowboys, and he's trying to use the Eagles to pit them against the Cowboys to get a better deal from Dallas. And the reason I say this, okay, now this, this is where I slept on this last night. Here's, here's what I'm thinking. A couple of reasons why this could be true. Now, we understand that the Eagles, and uh, let me, I can pull it up here. I, I'm betting. I'm going to pull up over the cap this morning. Okay, over the cap. And I want to see what the cap space is because I'm betting that the Eagles don't have a lot of money under the cap. Okay. Let's see. Cap space. All right. So right now, surprisingly, the San Francisco 49ers have more cap space than anybody with $39 million, mainly because they're not paying their quarterback. If we go to the Cowboys, the Cowboys have $6.6 million of cap space, according to Over the Cap. If we go to the Eagles, the Eagles have 2.3. So the Cowboys have a little bit more room to work with. Now, the Cowboys are going to have some issues, of course, next year um, because Dak Prescott's a $59 million cap hit, but that's easily remedied by getting him a long-term deal, which they should have done at the beginning of the year. So from in, in essence, the Cowboys have a little bit more room to work with than the Eagles do money-wise. Now, that's not to say that the Eagles won't, you know, restructure somebody or release somebody. Howie Roseman has been a uh, mass, mass uh, I mean, he's been great at just, you know, figuring out how to, you know, juggle the bills, you know, uh, floating checks, if you, you know, if you're old enough to understand what that means. But understanding that he's going to find a way when he wants a player, so he can probably get it worked out, but the Cowboys do have a little more space to work with. And what Shaq can do is pit the Cowboys against the Eagles. He may want to go to the Cowboys, and by going to the Eagles, he can come, you know, because the Joneses, you think about the Joneses, what they typically do. They did this with Mari Cooper. They let him become a free agent and said, you know, go out there and see what you can get. Washington came up with a deal that was actually better than what the Cowboys offered, but he realized, I don't really want to be in Washington. And the Cowboys have let guys go to free agency and then sign them later. And this may be a case, because a leopard doesn't change his spot too often. And this may be a case of them saying, okay, you know, Shaq, we like you and all that. See what the Eagles are going to offer you, and we'll match it and put a little extra on top of it. That maybe they're using the Eagles for leverage against the Cowboys. I don't know. But he says he'll make a decision by this weekend. And, you know, I would hope uh, for no other reason because the Eagles have gotten so arrogant, you know, that they, they're literally, yeah, it, you know, you go through Twitter and all that, they use it, you know, every game, if I'm watching the Eagle game and I'm throwing my headset and I'm falling back, it, it'll become a video clip. I need to copyright these people and try and get a bit of piece of the pie because they're making money off of me. But I would love for this to turn and be, you know, pie on their face. 
But we'll have to wait and see how that works out. But in all actuality, the Cowboys are in a better position at linebacker than um, the Eagles are. The Eagles are more desperate than we are. But if I'm Shaq and I'm looking at the two teams, and may maybe you look at it and say, you know, the Eagles got a better chance of winning the Super Bowl. But I look and I see the reason to go to Dallas is because of Dan Quinn and what he has done with that defense. You can go to the Eagles. Let, let me look and see where the defense is ranked. Um, the Eagles, the Eagles are pretty good at stopping the run, although they haven't been quite as good. Um, yardage defense, the Cowboys are 276, which is third. The Eagles, where are the Eagles? Eagles, Eagles, Eagles. Eagles are 19th, giving up 331. Wow, TDs allowed. Okay, that's not a good one. good site to go to. Where it is over? Let's see. I always use Pro Football Reference. Okay. So if we're talking about passing TDs. Um, Cowboys have given up 23. Oh, surprising. Okay, the Eagles are actually 22. Hmm, that's actually better than I thought. Uh, yards. Oh, looking at the wrong year. Duh. Okay. Uh, okay, I was like, 20. I was like, how did that happen? I was looking at 22. So, TDs. The Eagles have given up 23 TDs on the season, which are second worst. Only the Commanders are worse, which is right there with the Chicago Bears. For the Cowboys, you got to go way, way down to 14, uh, excuse me, 15, where they've given up 14. And how many of those are garbage time ones? Because they're blowing people out. Yardage-wise, the Eagles are fifth most at giving up uh, 2,813, whereas the Cowboys are 31st, only giving up 1,839 yards. So once you understand, let me say that again. The Eagles have given up almost, oh, over 1,000 yards more on defense. 1,000. Takeaways. Cowboys are ninth with 12, three out of the top. And... Where is Eagles, 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 Eagles. Where are you, Eagles? Titans, da, 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 da. I, I don't even see the Eagles on here. Tennessee, Carolina, Green Bay, Rams, KC, Eagles. Oh, six. So if I'm wanting to go someplace that's got defense and it's got a great defensive coach I gotta look at the Cowboys I gotta look at the Cowboys and say Dan Quinn can definitely make some hay if I've got the front that the Dallas Cowboys have out there um I want to be part of that because those guys that there will make my job easy that that would be my take on it but we'll see you know We'll see uh, where it goes. So as we get out of here, let's go ahead and take a quick peek at Get Up and hear what they have to say uh, about our game for tomorrow. <laughs> We're going to doubt 100 yards oh. in this game against Seattle. Listen, I think they finding something with this kid, kind of bell cow yeah. in between the trenches. I thought him and the mix of Tony Pollard worked better for this offense as we've seen for the past couple of weeks. Rico Dowdo is South Carolina kid, played in the SEC, physical pound and runner. I'm I think glad you're explaining because most fans don't know who he is. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. I think they're going to yep. start leaning into him a little bit more in some critical situations. Kmart, 
Bold prediction. Oh, Deron Bland. It's the, listen, this is the defensive player of the year right one? now. Another one. Another one. one. Another Alan. one. DJ Khaled. Yeah, yeah he has a record. Five, five pick sixes already. He's about to get another Bring one. on the pick <laughs> six. <laughs> oh, my goodness. They said it's real, though. Dude, that's crazy. Believe in Unreal. That's crazy. Uh, MVP. Yeah. Since we're talking about the Cowboys, you know, Dak Prescott finally in that MVP conversation. Well, he responded to the praise on Monday. All right. What I say to myself is I really hey, haven't done shit. it. You know what I mean? It's um, regular season. Numbers are great. We're getting wins. That's, what, that's what's most important. But at the end of the day, we're trying to stack and keep growing this team to make sure that we're getting better each and every week. What you think? David Tepper. <laughs> Go watch that. It's simple. <laughs> Dak Prescott is someone who knows what it's like to be in the spotlight and be the face of the organization. I guarantee you Dak Prescott feeling great about mm-hmm. how he oh. is. But he yes. also knows what the conversation is around him. And he knows the best thing I can do now is come up here and be humble while I'm balling and say, I ain't done nothing. Done because nothing. if yep. Dak Prescott steps up there and like, man, I'm killing. Look at me do this. All of us going to jump up there and be jerks and be like, hey, well, you ain't doing it in the playoffs. But yep. he understands the assignment. And he understands that he's not talking to the man who, who's holding the mm-hmm. camera or the woman who's holding the microphone. He is talking to the entire country because we mm-hmm. all care about what happens to the yes, Cowboys. Lord. So I like that he said that. But I hope <laughs> in his off time, he is enjoying it. He's got cooking. Exactly really? is, yeah. is he said, he said basically, I love it. He basically said, be Kendrick. Sit down. <laughs> be humble. <laughs> what do you think, Swag? You know what I, you know what I like? I like this version of that. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right? I like the I like the version that the, ain't the daddy dad. to make sure I say the right thing. And he understand he's read the room. Mm-hmm. He's read the room of conversations year in and year out. And he knows what this stretch is going to mean yeah. for him. When we talk about the MVP conversation, there is no question Dak has played at at a higher level than most quarterbacks in the league. He's had a tremendous amount of success. The reality is the teams have been terrible. Mm-hmm. It yeah. started against Philly, though where he yes. played great and the inner loss. These games that are coming up before the season, cuz I said these these moments, these is about moments for that. Mm-hmm. It's coming up. Yeah. Here it is right now. You about to get in the thick of it. Yeah. You you position in playoff. You're talking about teams that you're gonna foresee have to see right in the playoffs. You're talking about defenses, especially with the San Francisco 49ers, where you're going to have to answer offensively. Like I know we talk about the Dallas Cowboys defense and what they can do. When you play the San Francisco 49ers, you can't score 14 points and win the game. Mm -hmm. You are going to have to go play well. And the way he's playing, hopefully that momentum leads for him to play well. But Dak understands, and he's read the room, that nobody's excited about you beating the Giants twice. And nobody's excited about the Commanders game. (laughs) These games that's coming up, this Thursday night game, a big one for them in Seattle. And then going into the rest of the stretch. I like the fact that he's reading the room, but I also like that Dak, I feel like Dak un- took off some stuff and was like, man, I don't give a damn. Yeah. I'm just about just, to go play. Dak just seems like he is in a good place. He's about yeah. to be dad. He's more con- it, he seems more confident in this offense and mm-hmm. more confident in his own skin. And I love that because it seems to have unleashed the Dak that has always been there, the yeah. playmaker, the guy that says, I understand it's all on me and we're good. I got us. But I understand it's about the moments that Marcus Spears is always talking about. I got to be better when the yes, lights sir. are brighter. Yeah. Yes, and, and, and they have a team that can win a Super Bowl. Yeah. But mm-hmm. until people see it, they're not going to give Dak the call. And Dak from the boot, man. He, we don't, we don't, he from Louisiana. We don't be talking all that. We don't be all that clean talking. Uh, the, the, I'm glad he's throwing curse words out. We curse. That, that's what, I'm that's what we do. Jeff, I want you to take a look at the, the Cowboys. Boot, yeah. Yeah. I, take bottom. a look at the Cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, I let him know the truth. Look, look at this, Jeff. Listen, uh, they should dog walk the Seattle. Whoa, Seattle. whoa, 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 no, whoa, you're at home. whoa. You're at the, home. The comments of Brian Cousins do not reflect and you the look attitude at you got, of ESPN. But you got know. Eagles, okay. Bills, Dolphins on the horizon. You got to go in there and just beat the brakes off of Seattle yeah, and get ready for the Eagles, the Bills, and the Dolphins. Give me your thoughts, Jeff. Did Gino it's, it's, heard it's a, that? It's a massive game Thursday night. I'm just yeah. letting you know that it's a massive game because it's the first team that has, has – you, you, Pete Carroll, for whatever the Seah- Seahawks lack, they put good game plans together on the back end, yep. right? So if he goes and has that type of performance. But Swagoo said this in the first hour. The thing with the Cowboys when you play bad teams is you need to build confidence. Mm-hmm. If there's mm-hmm. anything that the Cowboys have done, whether it's on the back end with Bland or whether it's on the offensive side, they have built confidence. You're As they walk that. in these games, they should feel like they're the best play team with on anybody. the field. Mm-hmm. And play with anybody. There they saw go. what they did in Philly. They understand what they can do. they got to finish games, but they should should go in with these games confident. They should feel confident because over the last three games, 
the margin that they're beating teams by is like 127 to 30. Right. It is wild. So they should feel confident. And I like I like the position the Cowboys yeah. are in. The, I really the, do. The, the NFL, it, y'all, it's about discomfort. Like, how do you handle discomfort? Mm -hmm. The reason why we're talking about Philly, because they handle discomfort better than anybody, anybody in the NFL. Yep. Uh -huh. Dallas got their discomfort coming up. Yes. The first opportunity we saw them in un uncomfortable situations, yeah. 49ers boat, boat race. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? They responded in Philly, played yeah. well, lost to a better team that day. Yep. Now you're about to get back into some uncomfortable games yep. and uncomfortable situations. We'll see how they respond. Because yeah. if they don't, I got smoke. <laughs> <laughs> they got smoke. You know, you know. You know that all of the Cowboy haters are lying in wait. Just wait, just waiting for the Cowboys to stumble. But we'll see what happens. I can't wait till tomorrow night. But as always, you know we got to get to work, man. We got so much to do. And I can't wait to see this floor up here, sand it out, and to finish getting this place put together. Um, this is the last real major area that we have to work on here at the Red Brick House. And I can't wait to get this done. All right, good people. Have a great hump day. And we will be following along with Shaq Leonard. Peace.